Welcome to Slap Shot Podcast, episode number 65. I'm your host, Chris Morez. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. Welcome in. Welcome to the first episode of the new year. Happy 2024. To all of you, we have officially passed the midway point of the NHL season. It's a great time. Hockey is just full swing. It's been amazing. Hope you had an amazing holidays. Hope you had a chance to watch it from hockey. I'm with my family. Whether they are humans, whether they are pets, matter. I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. That is what I am thankful for this year. We are in for a big 2024. I am excited for it. I'm just excited to talk hockey all the time. We got a jam packed show today. We're going to do the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then we're going to cover our main topic. Uh, yeah. Gonna roll right in there. If you are new here, a welcome in. Thanks for being here. Give yourself a round of applause. Make sure you hit the sub button, ring the bell if you're watching this on YouTube. I appreciate you. If not, you can find the podcast on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Podbean. I don't know wherever else you get it as well. Go ahead, subscribe. If you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you do so at FuzzyChris91. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at my podcast. I'm just excited to be here. So we're gonna cover a whole bunch of different things. Today, let's start with the good. Let's start 2024 off good. All right. A couple of good things here. I want to tackle two things. A, Professional Women's Hockey League. Round of applause for that league. They are up and running. I've had a chance to watch a couple of games because they are on TV and easy to find. Great product. A lot of support. A lot of people are watching it. A, I love that you can watch it on YouTube. You just open YouTube, you can watch it. They stream it there. I love the way that. Just the whole thing. It's competitive. I love it. A little bit of physicality, which I also love because I know some of you are going to go around being like, oh, the women don't hit anybody. No, they do. They do. And the games that I have watched have been really, really close. And they've been competitive the entire time. I love it. Round of applause for the Professional Women's Hockey League. Off to a great start. I hope that this league stays around for many years to come. And I am planning on going to watch them in person. I think that would be fun. A- it would be a lot more affordable than watching the Montreal Canadiens lose and give up a, pound, a goal, you know, down a man. So there's one. Uh, but just overall, it's good to support the women's game because it is a high level of hockey. I hope all of you, if you have a chance to watch it either on TV or in person, make sure you go and do so uh, because I think it is. Second, another round of applause here. Pains me to say it. Congratulations to the United States World Junior Team. They won the World championship they beat sweden uh as a canadian it pains me canada lost the checks the way that they did but that american team man nasty just nasty they were really really good shout out to lane hudson obviously much Canadian's product right uh just just what a beast what a beast i love that at the end there how he's channeling his inner Arbor Jack eye, just grabbing somebody and saying, hey, I'm going to tussle with you. Uh, just, just great. Shout out to Fowler as well, Canadian's goalie prospect as well. I know he didn't play in the gold medal game, but he was great in the tournament as well. Just this whole U.S. team was really, really good. And this is what happens when you put a bunch of great players together. They gel, and then they just dominate. The Swedes were very good. I felt bad for the Swedes as well because, man, they had a good team as well. And it's, it pains me that somebody has to lose. I love, I love watching kids play hockey at the highest level. A, the disregard for defense is amazing. These are not kids out here playing the best defensively. They are, however, going out here and just the celebrations, the blowing of the kisses, Austin sticks into the net afterwards when they've given up another empty net goal. Like they're children, raw emotion. I love it. The, 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 the defenseman toe dragging at the blue line, but he's the last line of defense. I love the confidence. I love it. I love this tournament. I know not everybody loves to watch it. I don't know why. I don't know what else you could be doing, but to me, I love watching the world juniors. Even when Canada is eliminated, just the quality of hockey is really, really good. Massive W's there as well. That is the good. The bad is the Chicago Blackhawks. Not because they're a terrible hockey team. 
That is true as well. But it, I mean, look, it has been to like as a Habs fan, a lot of people like to say Montreal Canadiens are injured. And the Chicago Blackhawks are 20, 2024 went, well, hold my beer. Because this team is wrecked. I'm going to show you their, their current players on IR. Right? Thanks to the good folks over at Cap Friendly. For, uh, sorry, a daily face-off for getting to this. These are the players on IR. Now, if you're living under a rock and you have no idea what's going on, you're going to see some names here that may shock you. A for one, Connor Bedard. Yes, Connor Bedard, unfortunately, broke in his job because he took hit the New Jersey game that broke his jaw. Nick Foligno decided to fight. I think it was Smith. I think he decided to fight Smith. Fine. Uh, then Nick Foligno broke a finger. So Smith was out here breaking bones uh, against Chicago. Chicago now is without Taylor Hall, Andreas Athanasiu, Seth Jones, Taylor Radish, Tyler Johnson, Anthony Beauvillier, and the two players of the suspension, Bedard and Foligno. Holy. Who's left? Who's left? This is a, first of all, we, we all understand that the opinions of the Chicago Blackhawks and the organization that they are. We all understand that. So, having said that, though, this is a terrible hockey team that is lining up to get another first overall pick. And even if they finish last, you say, Chris, doesn't mean they're going to win the lottery. Okay. The script has been written. Okay. If Chicago finishes last, they're getting the first overall pick because that's how the script is written. Uh, this is a poverty franchise right now. They, they are not fun to watch. I am convinced that if I head over to Chicago and I bring my hockey bag, I just sit in the stands, buy a ticket, sit in the stands. I think I could get a shift on the fourth line. At least one shift. I think I could be pulled out of the stands for one shift. I'm not saying I'd be very good, but I think I would get one shift. And I would, I would do the best that I can. I'd probably take like a 30 second shift and then just, you know, sail off into the sunset. Say I got my 30 seconds of fame, and I would be really happy with it. But the bad is definitely the Chicago Blackhawks, this poor, poor team that I do not feel sorry for at all, dealing with a mass amount of injuries. Again, talk about the Montreal Canadiens and their injury problems. Those still exist. Chicago is now the new leader. And I mean, I'm assuming they will lead in man games lost this year uh, for injury. I hope, like I said, Connor Bedard suffers a broken jaw. Yeah, usually it's about six weeks. Uh, it sucks because he is clearly the brightest spot on this roster and not having him in the NHL due to injury is terrible. So that is the bad. The ugly is going to be the whole rest of what we're talking about. We're going to break it up. In part. I thought... It would be easier to just talk about Ilya Samsonov, but we are beating a dead horse. We're going to leave him alone because he's got enough things to deal with, but uh, the man can't stop a beach ball, and it is what it is. So we're not going to beat up on him. Instead, we're going to tackle something that is much more important. We're gonna t and, it has, and it has to do with suspensions. And it has to do with the Department of Player Safety, my favorite department in the NHL. And it's not what they are doing. It is what they are lacking to do as well. So we're going to cover a couple of things. First, we're going to start with my favorite player of all time. And if you know me, you know how much I didn't like him when he was in Montreal. Mostly because he was getting an opportunity I didn't think he really deserved. But now he's just, he is entering the territory, the Tom Wilson, the Matt had a territory, uh, and, and that's not somewhere you want to be. Shout out, by the way, to Tom Wilson, who's heading to the All-Star game. I would take the over on him taking a pedal in your spirit, even in an all -Star. But, neither here nor there. So, we're going to do this whole thing where I'm going to easily explain it to everybody. Because Again, some of you may have just taken some time off and not followed hockey and have no idea what's going on. So, let me assist you here. I'm going to pull up the one that I want to show. We're going to start with uh, Nick Cousins and how he gets himself into this situation. All right. So I'm going to show you his hit on Eric Goodbranson, all right? Which is the first one that put him in a little bit of hot water, which caused Goodbranson to go back and try to, you know, hurt him. This is the hit. Now, Chris, what is wrong with this? A, I can't show you video, right? Because I do not have the express written consent of the National Hockey League or Sports Network. 
but we're not going to do that. But we're going to do the second best thing. This is Nick Cousins showing zero regard for player safety. Zero. Now, he, he meets all the criteria here. He is hitting a player from behind where the numbers are visible, and Good Branson's head is going towards the board. Now, Good Branson came out and was very, very vocal about what he thought about the hit. And the NHL and the Department of Player Safety said, you know what? We're going to let this go. It's fine, Nick. It's fine. They, that's not how it goes. I am of the strong belief that you have to protect players from their self. You have to protect Good Branson. And you also have to protect Cousins. Because you cannot let players run around doing things like this and not getting and not serving the consequence of their action. Because then you have players who try to police themselves. And now I understand some people are gonna go, hey. You know, we need enforcers. We need guys to hold the others accountable. And I, look, there, there is a time and place for everything. I do not think the NHL should be policing, allowing players to police themselves. But your Department of Player Safety has got to be bang on. And they are not. They are not. Because we've seen multiple incidents over the last few weeks of players policing themselves. And how do you think that has ended? Not great because why would it why would it right you wouldn't let people in the real world police themselves when things happen that's why we have law enforcement and we have you know a court system and all that because there needs to be some type of law and order there's none right now in the nhl because the department of player safety is terrible so cousins gets away with this saying chris what is wrong with that right what is wrong with that all right fine even if you don't agree with me let's say you don't agree say chris it's fine Clean hits. All right. You're Delulu, but that's fine. We'll leave it out there. Let me bring you to what Nick Cousins does instead against Valamaki. You're going to say, Chris, who is this so Valamaki guy? Doesn't matter. He plays in Arizona. Now, this is Nick Cousins. Appendix B. He is hitting Yusuf Valamaki. Valamaki is down, okay? It's not like he fell as the hit was happening. Again, I cannot show you the video. If you are not watching this on the YouTube, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to describe this as best as I can. But Valamaki is down on one knee, basically. His head is close to the railing of the board. And here comes Superman Nick Cousins to finish his hit. And he's got both skates off the ice. Not good. Not good. This, like... You don't need me to tell you this is a dangerous play. You don't need me to sit here and say, we can't have these types. There's no reason for Nick Cousins to be finishing his hit. None. But he does anyway. Obviously, that is a poor choice. His skates are off the ice, and he finishes a player in the head. Now, his conduct exists from Nick Cousins because you have failed to penalize him for what he has done. I'm not saying you 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 should have even suspended him or fined him for the Eric and Branson hit. Whether you agree with me or not is neither here nor there. But if I have the Department of Player Safety and you say, hey man, that's teetering on a line that can be crossed, I would at least let him know. Say, hey man, you're really close to doing something you shouldn't be doing. I just want you to be aware of that. Right? Maybe you toss him a fine. You say, hey, man, first of all, the, NA the maximum you can be fined in the NHL is five grand. I'm assuming players pay this in cash in an envelope. Right? They, they open an envelope. They put DOPS, Department of Player Safety, attention, George Paros, and then they just like lick it and then put it in the mail and then 5,000 cash. They don't even need a receipt. You know what I mean? That's how I'm assuming they pay their fine. But the. This was a, there was an opportunity to let Cousins know that he's not doing something right to prevent this from happening. Not that you have to tell him not to do it, but you do. Now, you're saying, Chris, did he get suspended? Of course not. He did it. Something worse happened, because now how do you think this goes for Nick Cousins? What do you think happens 
when a team sees a player that gets a cheap shot. Oh, let me bring in. Let me, let me find the one that I'm looking for here. There we go. Let me pull this up. All right, well, let's bring in Jason Zuck. What do you think Jason Zucker did? Well, he smashes Cousins from behind, right? As you can see here in Appendix C. This is Zucker seeing the numbers of Cousins and plastering him into the board from behind. The puck is nowhere near because now the player stopped. Now, Jason Zucker got suspended three games for his hit. And in no way do we condone what Jason Zucker did because the retaliation for a player doing something wrong is not giving the, the, the person who heard him a concussion, which is what Nick Cousins has suffered, a brain injury. The penalty for what Nick Cousins did is not a brain injury. I, like, that's, that's what it is. I know some of you live on the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth island, but we don't do that here because, again, we do not want players to police themselves and take matters into their own hand because sometimes the punishment does not fit the crime. There are lots of different ways that this could have been settled, i.e., in the way that Connor Bedard took a clean hit. The hit was clean against New Jersey. And what did Nick Foligno do? He found Smith and he says, hey, we're going to fight. That's a whole other conversation for another day about players having to fight for clean hits. But you hit a player, a superstar, and I'm going to let you know that you cannot do that, so we're going to fight it. Smith can handle it and Foligno can handle it. They're two guys who could, that, that's it. That's what you do. And maybe that's what should have been done here with Cousins. Somebody says, hey, man, you're going to have to answer the bell for this. I can live with that. I can. In this case, Nick Cousins' hit is dirty. So I can live with that as saying, hey, you have to answer the bell. I do, I, I do not support Jason Zucker coming back and just plastering Cousins. Whether you believe that he deserved it or not is neither here nor there. You cannot allow players to police. Now, the Department of Player Safety is to blame for everything that happened. Because one, hurt. Nick Cousins has not been suspended for either one of those hits, by the way. Jason Zucker is the only one who gets something else. Now, if you tell a player, you just advise them. You say, hey, man, like you're teetering on a line that you're crossing. The next time you do, it's not a fine, it's a suspension. Because now you've been warned. I believe that the NHL should have, like, I understand a fine hurt. I also understand where the NHL could sit down with a player and say, hey, this, what you did, we feel may not have been a suspendable action. Maybe the penalty is enough, but you're teetering on a line that could get you in trouble. I'm just letting you know. And then you let the player decide what he does from there. And maybe Nick Cousins says, okay, they're watching me. I should probably be on my best behavior and not leave my skates to hit a guy in the head who's on his knee. Just, I'm just spitballing here. I'm just throwing out ideas, right? Like, hear me through. Instead, the NHL has done none of that. They've, they've penalized the aggressor, which is Zucker here, right? Zucker comes in here and does something he should not be doing. He takes, he gets a three-game suspension. He's not going to appeal it He's because he knows he did wrong. And you see Cousins just lying there, obviously, now concussed. And it is what it is. It is unfortunate to see this happen. And this falls on the Department of Player Safety. Because they failed to protect everybody in this situation, including Cousins. Because he was allowed to continue doing what he was doing with the mindset that he's, nobody's going to do anything about it, right? And, and, and why, why should I stop if I'm not going to get suspended or something, right? You can take a penalty on something. And there are cases where, like I said, you take a hit and it's unfortunate. Some people think the Connor Bedard hit was dirty. It's not. It's unfortunate. Principal points of contact are important. Like Zucker's not looking to do much here other than plaster Cousins' head into a wall, which he did, and it ends poorly, okay? This is, this is scenario number Number one, you know, there is more. There is more. It's been a busy holiday. It has. So now you're saying, okay, Chris, that's an isolated incident. Happened. Now hold on. Wait a minute. I'm going to show you one where, again, policing yourself, not good. All right? We're going to bring in here 
Kirill the Thrill Kaprizov. Kirill Kaprizov throws a reverse hit on Brandon Dillon. Guess what Brandon Dillon does? Doesn't like it. So he doesn't do anything completely illegal here, apart from cross-checking Kaprizov in the lower part of the back and the ribs. Now, when you play hockey, you know how extremely painful this is. If you don't, hockey players have their pants. There's a small little part that comes up a little bit. There's very little protection there. And when your shoulder pads are on, there, there's not much on your side, right, in terms of protection. And the shoulder pads are kind of higher up. They go just below, like, the pectoral muscle, right? They're basically finished at, like, you know, your upper chest. There's a lot of space on the side where it's just skin and a T-shirt. Some players wear padding. I'm assuming Kirill does not. Now, Kirill was had to miss some time. He's out one to two weeks. We don't know what, but I'm assuming it's painful. Now, Dylan gave him a bunch of cross-checks for this guy. If I'm not mistaken, he was penalized for that. He was given a cross-checking penalty, which fits the crime. It does. Now, again, maybe the NHL goes back, reviews this, the Department of Player Safety, and they just give Brandon Dillon a Like you can't repeatedly cross-check a player like that. You can't do that. A penalty would, would be sufficient, but using your stick as a weapon to deliberately try to hurt somebody is something that we are now going to at least let you know that you should not be doing. Again, whether you agree with me or not, neither here nor there, I don't care. I don't care. But you're saying, okay, Chris, what does this have to do with anything? Well, allow me to show you how the Minnesota Wild decided to deal with it, i.e., here's Ryan Hartman. Now, again, I can't show you the video, but this is as close as the clip. This is as close as I can get. Cole Perfetti comes in to take the face off because whoever else was there was waved out. Now, guess how this goes? Ryan Hartman takes the stick and just absolutely smashes it into Cole Perfetti's face. Are you saying, Chris, it's a face off? Things happen, right? He was trying to win, and he just missed, right? No, he did it because Cole Perfetti was mic'd up. And the Winnipeg Jets were kind enough, of course, to release audio that allegedly Ryan Hartman told Cole Perfetti that that was payback for the hit on Caprissa for the cross check. Now, obviously, again, we do not condone what Ryan Hartman has done. This one, I feel, is... Just as bad as, as the Nick Cousins. A, Hartman is going after the wrong individual. Cole Perfetti has nothing to do with this. He is just a young player taking a face off. And now he's got to take a stick to the face. Now, nothing severe happened for it. Perfetti's got like a cut, no concussion, no nothing. Again, we cannot use, we cannot use a stick as a weapon. We can't do it, okay? Moved a little bit. We can't use a stick as a weapon. Ryan Hartman does exactly that. He was given a fine. Again, I'm assuming he paid cash. Maybe he needs a receipt. This is a boneheaded play. Boneheaded. They say, Chris, okay. Like, where are you going with this? Right? Now, all of this is wrong. You're saying, how is the mentality of this still allowed to exist? Where we think that it is okay to exact revenge on the wrong guy, even if it's the right guy. Don't worry. I got you covered. Here is Twiddle Dick and Twiddle Dumb. If you don't know who that is, the, guy, the gentleman on the left, is Jamal Myers, former NHL player. Guy on the right is Sam Constantinos. I don't really care who he is. Now, if you haven't watched the, the clip on Sportsnet, five minutes long, with these two idiots, and then Jennifer Botterill is there and somebody else, they're having a conversation exactly about the Kirill Kaprizov and Cole Perfetti and all that. Again, I cannot, we cannot watch the clip because I do not have the express written consent of Sportsnet. So, I encourage you to go watch it. I retweeted it, so you can head over to Fuzzy Chris 91 on Twitter, at Fuzzy Chris 91, and you can watch it. It's five minutes of your life, and then you'll understand. 
these are these gentlemen here are dinosaurs. They are dinosaurs. Jamal Myers finished his career with 90 goals and 1,200 penalty minutes. I don't have to tell you on what side of the coin he thinks he is right on. Now, you can see in this interview how irritated Jennifer Botterill is, who is, by the way, a multi-gold medal winner. And you can tell that she is the smartest person on that panel because she immediately calls out the bullshit that Jamal Myers is saying here. In short, he's basically saying, that you have that he he abides by the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, right? If you hit my guy and you hurt my guy, well, I'm gonna go after your player, your best player. First of all, in the case of Cole Perfetti, not even the best player on the team. He's pretty good. But I mean, Mark Shifley is still there. <laughs> I would throw in Nikolai Ehlers as well. There are other players, Josh Morrissey, there are other guys on this team that you could have exact revenge on if you believe in that discourse. And they chose Cole for that. A man who had nothing to do with it. And Jennifer Bottle's point is great. Young players coming up in the league have to deal with this? This is what you want your young players to deal with? That they got to come up here and take a stick to the face from Ryan Hartman on purpose who says it? Allegedly. It Again, man, I understand things happen in hockey. I play hockey. You don't think I've ever, you know, been a third man into something? Sure. I've also gotten suspended for it. Because you do not want players to police themselves. Okay? Let's go back here. Twiddle Dick and Twiddle Dumb are on the side of policing themselves. Jamal Myers did exactly that for all for his entire career. He is a dinosaur. You do not need these types of players in the NHL anymore. The Ryan Reeves of the world, we don't need. We don't need any of them. We can move on from them. You can have guys who are tough and skilled. Okay? Those guys exist. I'm going to give you a good example. Brady and Matthew Kachuk. Skilled guys who can throw their weight around, toss the mitt, but their main goal is to go out there, score goals. You can have more of those. You do not need any Jamal Myers in the NHL. I'm not taking away any of his accomplishments. But when it comes to player safety or opinions about players and their safety, probably the last guy on the list that I'd want to talk about. Probably. Which is why I do not think having George Peros as part of the Department of Player Safety is a good idea. Because that's not the guy I really want in charge. Right? I believe that that committee should be very diverse with different types of players if you want that. You don't even have to be a player. You do not have to be a player in order to understand how players work. You don't need to. You can have, you know, outside opinions from smart people as well. But the fact that these two idiots thought it is a good to verbally publicize this as their stand. Like I watched the whole clip and I was just beyond myself because I couldn't believe that this was the hill that they were going to die. Right? In no way should you support a a player intentionally wanting to hurt somebody else. And this is where the department, again, the, where the Department of Player Safety has to be good. Because if you, if when players, when players, like, there are what, 700 players in the NHL-ish? Seven, 800? That is a small brotherhood. That's less than 1% of the planet of people who play hockey. They're not out there to hurt each other. They don't all like each other. But they're not all out there to hurt each other. They all do the same thing. They all play the same game and they do it for a living. Right? I understand guys are trying to stay in the lineup and they got to do certain things. But they do not have the intent to hurt. But when you do have players who do so, like Nick Cousins, now he's putting himself in danger. He's putting himself. Because when players don't care about your safety and at the level that they play at, they can cause some serious harm. You cannot let kids run around in a playground unattended, unsupervised, letting them police themselves and expect good things to happen. That's the same thing for the NHL. So you have referees, and that's why you have a discipline committee to eliminate this. But you got to be good on it. And you got to tell players when they are coming close to the line. And you have to penalize them. And it has to be severe. 
And if it means that the fine's got to be more, then the fine's got to be more. But this is unacceptable to allow this type of conduct to exist because these are this is just the last few weeks of hockey. The last few weeks, we still have half a year to go. And we got these two clowns on TV saying, well, you know what? You go after my guy, I'm just going to go after yours. And that's it. And we're going to tell you that you can't go after my player. Again, at worst, at worst, I can live with the fact that if you're Ryan Hartman, you go up to Dylan and you say, hey, man, didn't like a cross check on Carell. Now you're going to fight me for it. I can somewhat live with it. I can somewhat live. Again, if my memory is, is not mistaken, I think Brendan Dillon got a penalty. So, like, again, it is an unfortunate event, and we will never know if Brendan Dillon did it on purpose. Video was pretty close that he definitely wanted to leave some cross checks, and he did. But at worst, you want to settle it with fists quickly? Do so. A, pick the right guy. Start with that. B, settle it, move on. Things happen in hockey. It is a contact sport. Because in many cases where we see players policing themselves, it doesn't work. Right? Ask Todd Bertuzzi how that went. We do not police ourselves. The NHL and the Department of Player Safety, it is their mandate to protect players, including the ones that could get themselves in trouble. Because now, if I'm a player and I see Nick Cousins Along the board, I might not think twice about maybe driving him a little bit harder. And again, as much as I don't like Nick Cousins, man has a family. Pretty sure he's got kids and wife. They deserve to have their dad around and their husband around without CTE in the brain. But you have to protect players from themselves. And you got it. And the fact that Nick Cousins has not served a suspension for any of those hits is a problem because those are hits that you're trying to remove from hockey. You cannot be hitting players from behind and we could have an entire six hour conversation about players protecting themselves and all that jazz. But on the surface, we need to make sure that the NHL and the department of player safety is protecting players. Even the ones that turn their back, even the ones and you say, Chris, we're going to turn into a no hitting league. False. Hit the guy when you see him. You don't have to pile drive everybody, right? There is no reason, there is no reason for this. Okay, I'll show it to you again in case you got lost. There's no reason for this to be a hit. There is no mental comprehension behind allowing this to happen if you're Nick Cut. There's no reason to drive this hit. Like, what are you accomplishing? I don't see the puck, and I see two skates off the ice which is a pretty good indication. It boggled my mind to see him leave his feet when the player's head is board level, where the glass of the board starts. That's the dangerous part as well. In the same way, right? Let me pull this one up. Again, they all look alike. Where's good Branson's head? Not good, man. It's not good. You cannot allow this to happen. And this falls on the Department of Player Safety and how they conduct themselves. It has not been good. I think there are new people that need to be in charge. I think a couple of suspensions need to be handed out here. But none of this changes. The mentality will change. Unless the new guard of players and people coming up want it to change. Right? When players start saying, hey, we want to be protected at all costs, then things are going to change, right? Because if not, you have dinosaurs on TV saying, well, we're going to go out there and protect each other. You can protect each other in one way, yes. But you do not have to exert your revenge on the wrong person. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to exert your revenge on, on the player who's earned it. I think maybe a rule change needs to be if you get caught with hitting a player from behind, make it a double minor. That's it. Make it a major. I know you can assess a major for boarding, right? Maybe we assess a double minor. Maybe you don't have to go that far. You hit a player from behind in the numbers, four minutes, right? It's not a foreign concept, okay? It's not a foreign concept. I know the old geezers don't like when things change. 
and you can adapt, and you can have things be different, you can protect players, and still have a physical product. You can. You can still have a clean, open ice hit, and yeah, you know what? Sometimes players are going to have to answer the bell for that. Again, I don't think it's fair. You hit a player clean, and then some guy comes up to you and wants to fight you for it, but look, man, if I want to pile drive a player and send a message, I can do it. That's why the instigator rule is there, and you have to apply it. Especially when it's a clean hit. Just apply the instigator rule. You're fine. <laughs> Players are going to get hurt with contact. It's a contact sport, man. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. You cannot say, hey, you cannot hit elite players. They are on the ice. They will take hits. It's unfortunate when they get hurt. But the thing we can remove is whatever Nick Cousins is doing. We don't need that to exist. The players need to be penalized. That is my take. They agree to disagree. You can send all your hate tweets to me. I will read them. I will. I, I, I will read them. I may not respond to it, but I will read it. Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the episode of the podcast for the new year. And thank you, as always, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. Give yourselves a round of applause. You all deserve it. If you have not already, like I said, Today, we use a lot of pictures to describe everything. So again, best way to watch the podcast, if you have the opportunity to do so, is right on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Slapshot Pod. Hit the sub button, ring the bell. I appreciate you. Um, if not, if you're listening to this on your way to work or your morning commute, maybe you're in, in the shower, cool. Uh, Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, I, I, I think it's on Google Podcasts as well. Anywhere you get your podcast, if you click on the link tree, if you go to at Slapshot Podcast on Twitter, click the link tree, you can find exactly where the podcast is, wherever you listen to it, where's your favorite, hit the subscribe button there or the follow or whatever button they use. I would appreciate it greatly. Uh, I, I, I just, I love it. love it. I know this was not a, you know, th th this was a downer way to start 2024. Someone had to talk about it. I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love you all. We'll talk to each other again. All right. Stay safe. Don't be yeah. a cup.